Um, hi, welcome uh, to this open day. Uh, my name is Lorelai Han Herrera and I am the convener for the Global Media and Digital Cultures Distance Learning Program. Um, so let's just go ahead. Um, so one of uh, some of the characteristics of uh, media studies at SOAS is first and foremost is quite an interdisciplinary program. And uh, we look at media from different approaches and really focus on the idea of the construction of the national um, and through media and criticize this approach too. And we, it's a heavily theoretical uh, course, uh, particularly the first module, but then we also explore the methodology of doing research in media, particularly qualitative research on media studies. And we also engage in some of the pedagogical debates of, of doing media and communication studies in general. And uh, I think one of the main characteristics of doing st uh, media studies at SOAS is, is looking at it from a non-Western perspective. So this is, uh, SOAS traditionally has a focus on, on Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. I would say now also we would include um, the study of the Global South. Um, and the way the program is, is taught is through um, different sort of uh, learning spaces. So we do have a few tutorials and students are um, encouraged to participate on electronic forums or e-forums. And um, I would also, emphasize that it is quite a um, independent study uh, type of program where students are required to do the readings before engaging in the e-forums and that that sort of puts the ball rolling for for how we debate these ideas and another aspect of the way the modules work is that usually we don't have very big groups i would say maximum 25 students per group and students are um, asked to engage in regular activities. And these activities are on top of the weekly um, electronic forums that we have, and um, they are marked. That's how the mark for the module is, is um, obtained. And throughout one module, we have six activities that the students have to develop. And they go from very basic and simple tasks towards the final activity for each module, which uh, tends to be um, a 5,000 word essay. So it does go in an incremental way for students to be able to develop their critical skills and their ability to write and engage in academic debates. Additionally, um, all the students that are enrolled in the distance learning program for media are also um, part of the activities that we would have and we would offer for media students in campus. So we have um, a weekly uh, research seminar where um, we have um, researchers and PhD students that have done um, the research on gender and media studies and they come presented to students. So students can see how um, the topics and the themes they study can sort of be applied in the real world in, in an academic setting. So um, a bit more about the course structure. Uh, first and foremost, the program is um, through two years and we have um, students are required to enroll in four different uh, modules and they are only allowed to take one module per term. So uh, for example, if you were to enroll in April, um, you would take uh, your main course, your main module from April until I would say mid July. Um, and then um, your next module, your, uh, this is over a period of 16 weeks. And then your next module will begin again in October. So this is how the calendar goes from April. Um, we have one intake in April, one intake in October and they roll on every 16 weeks. In between those 16 weeks, students are also required to take what we call mini modules. And these are called mini dissertation modules specifically. 
Um, they are about six weeks each, and they are also four. Uh, and they help students develop their um, final dissertation, which is also part of, of how we will grade them so they can complete the program. So, for example, the first mini module of uh, the dissertation would ask students to think about how to develop the research question, what are they interested in writing their final dissertation about, how are they planning to do it. And in this way, um, through the four mini modules, students would be able to develop um, their dissertation and, and not have to think about the final dissertation at the very last moment and feel extremely pressured about how to accomplish a, a very good quality final dissertation. So um, the course structure is uh, first and foremost, uh, the first module, whether you enroll in April or in October for the program of, of uh, Global Media and Digital Cultures, students would have a core uh, module uh, where I am also the assistant tutor. This is a theoretical module, but we do look at the theory and try to relate it to specific case studies. Um, uh, I try to encourage students to think about events that are taking place in today's world where they can see the ideas of the readings and the literature we're covering and how they would relate, you know, real life practice into these theoretical um, concepts. Uh, after that, students are required to um, choose from two compulsory modules. They can choose transnational communities and diasporic media or digital diplomacy. So transnational communities and diasporic media would look at um, mixed migration flows and how both immigrants, refugees, asylum seekers relate to media, the use of media, how media can impact identity construction, um, how they would relate to national identities, to the idea of, uh, of the national, to, to the idea of the homeland, um, as well as how diasporic communities would engage not only with media where they come from, but media where they are now, and, and sometimes even develop their own diasporic media, their own, um, their own relationships to that. Uh, in the module of digital diplomacy, we look more at the idea of international relations and political communication, um, particularly the way that um, both state and non-state actors relate to ICTs, so the internet, social media, and how this impacts the way international, relationship, uh, international relations take place. Um, the idea of soft power, uh, developing propaganda in today's world with the media tools that are available now to both like state leaders, but also um, the rest of the diplomatic core. Um, following that, the third module would ask students to choose from electives from different topics. Uh, both offered in the Center for Global Media and, and Communication. So they can choose that the uh, topics around media and religion, uh, media and development, media and gender, media and gender in the Middle East. And lastly, the, the, four, the fourth module, the last module, students are allowed to take a module from any other department at SOAS, such as development studies, global diplomacy, gender studies, and these allow students to be able to tailor the program to whatever is more interesting to them and even to their uh, professional practice, if, if that um, happens to be also an important part of, of why, why they're doing the distance learning course. Um, so, well, why is it important to study media in today's world? Uh, First, it's because really media is central to um, the key debates that are taking place in politics, but generally in how we develop as a society, in cult, uh, how we develop culture, the idea of how we construct our own identities, both uh, through social media, the internet, and in the offline world, which now this divide has sort of, um, based out because there's no, there's no real gap anymore. But yeah, basically me, uh, 
we at SOAS like to think that media is embedded in, in everything we do. And it, it has um, a historical trajectory of, of constructing um, the nation state and impacting who is able to participate within that paradigm that still prevails to this day and how um, individuals as well as groups develop uh, their ideas of communities, how social media particularly has also break, uh, broken this notion of communities, how it has fragmented um, audiences, increased political division, um, contributed to populism in today's world. And also we look at the idea of media as economic, social and political entities. So we look at the political economy of media, who owns the media, why it matters who owns the media, how media ownership affects media coverage, um, particularly in political events, but also how um, media ownership affects, you know, the online world. So for example, um, digital capitalism and, and now uh, social media and, and politics, how it affects democracy, how it can affect development, etc. So some of the things that you can expect uh, from undertaking a master's degree at SOAS, I would say first is uh, to gain the notion that media uh, has a role in politics, but also in social and economic and cultural lives. We look at ideas around misinformation, bias, surveillance of, of media in today's world. And we also uh, have a heavy component of looking at the idea of of media and its relationship to not only digital activism and participation, but to, in general to the development of grassroots movements and how that uh, can maintain um, activism, but also undermine it. We look at the idea of media and uh, problems around representation, around uh, providing voice to voiceless um, and participation and how that media can also undermine you know, these um, ideas of representation. We also look at uh, transnational connections, particularly around mixed migration flows, diasporic communities. Um, we do look at media and conflict. Uh, so particularly in, in uh, this particular context of today, um, it is important to look at how media coverage can affect ideas of news bias, um, empathy, etc. And we do look at media and gender, the development of identity in general, media and development, as well as media and religion. So some of the outcomes that you can expect after uh, doing a, a distance learning program at SOAS is that we do want students to develop critical skills um, and have um, knowledge on the rise of global media as part of capitalist structures and globalization process. Um, we like students to understand the expansion in digital platforms and technologies within social, political, and economic structures. So understand media as part of a broader context um, and how there is sort of a dialectical relationship between the context in which media develops, but how media at the same time affects that context and its, its um, ongoing development as well as uh, we look at their knowledge, having knowledge on, on the relationship between politics and media, media power, media effects, media and nationalism, and media and diverse cultures. So basically looking at media and the power relations that exist within media, media as a hegemonic structure, media as a political entity, and um, yeah, media as, as part of, of um, um, being able to, to allow or to provide power and, and maintain power to people that already have it, but also media being able to diffuse that power to grassroots movements or people that haven't had traditionally been able to counteract those narratives. And also we look at the idea of uh, the role that media has in normalizing inequality, uh, differentiations along gendered, racial, ethnic, and religious lines, 
obviously so is having a tradition of looking at Asia, Africa, the Middle East and the Global South. We do look at how media has now, um, particularly with the, um, the internet and social media, how me, um, we have this sort of duality where we still have hegemonic narratives and, and um, this discursive power, but how uh, some of the populations have been able to take um, control of these media resources and challenge power and, and, and sort of uh, counteract those um, traditional narratives too. So yes, as I said before, the structure is that we have uh, four main courses and each course is uh, 16 weeks total. Um, they can be um, in October and April, obviously not only 2020 or 2021, they go rolling. And then we have, sorry, the mini dissertation modules. We also have four of those, as I said, and they help students to be able to develop and actually write their dissertation without having to wait up till the last moment. Um, then we also have the compulsory model modules that they can choose from, such as digital diplomacy, transnational communities, and diasporic uh, media. And then uh, students are able to choose from a module from the rest of the SOAS catalog in CISD, as well as um, media and religion, media in the Middle East, media and gender to tailor the program to, to suit their needs and their own interests. So you can see here a few of the optional modules that students are able to choose from. So media and development, gender and security in Africa, contemporary themes in media and religion, gender and social inequality, contemporary global issues in media and gender, global diplomacy, Muslim minorities and the state, Muslim minorities in a global context, cultural diplomacy, diplomacy and power. So uh, it is quite um, a flexible program that allows students to choose um, what they want to gain expertise in and, and really be able to, to have in the end a, a, a degree in media, but with the knowledge or, or particular knowledge about a certain topic, if that's what they choose to do. And I think now I'm, I'm happy to take any questions or um, doubts that I might not have tackled during the, the presentation. Um, you can you can pop your questions uh, on the chat, or you can also um, open your mic. Uh, you don't have to have your video open if you don't want to, but just to let you know that the recording is um, the session is being recorded. So, um, you know, if you speak, your voice will be recorded. But happy to read from the chat too. Hi, hi Pablo. Oh, that that's fine, no worries. Do you still want to pop your your question? Okay, a PhD. So I would say we I'm not sure, but we don't, I don't think we offer distance learning PhDs. Do you know for sure, Rachel? Hi, um, I'm trying to think from the top of my head, actually. I don't think we do either. I'll just have a quick look and see if I can see any further information on the web pages. Just bear with me one moment and I'll... Yeah, I think, I mean, as someone that did a, an in-campus PhD at SOAS, I would say it's not an offer. Um, probably it was done briefly during, you know, the, the uh, peak of the pandemic times, um, but um, usually um, supervisors like you to be here 
um, to have uh, continuous meetings and also to, to supervise any progress that, that is taking place. And um, the only time when a PhD student is allowed to be away from SOAS is during the field work year, which um, usually takes place during the second year of the PhD. So the first year you would be able to, to, to develop your uh, proposal and then have um, your examination to see if you're allowed to be a PhD candidate. And then for the second year, depending on what you're doing, you would be able to, to go on further for, for, your, for your field work. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this, this particular session is for the master's program, but um, I, I don't think it's, it's an offer to do a PhD uh, on a distance learning basis. Yeah, you would, I think you would be required to move to London. Yeah, I think um, what you've just said is correct. I was just having a quick look to see if I could see anything else. But I think the case is that even if there were certain elements that you might do virtually, you would have to be living uh, within London and, and kind of doing most of it just because of that contact that you would have and the support that you would have um, is something that we would look for you to be on campus. So yeah, you would need to move to London for that. Well, I mean, I envy you a bit. Geneva is a nice place to live. <laughs> um, yeah, I think um, um, maybe the best thing is to approach the um, the admissions office, uh, and also if you have a, a specific idea of who you want to be your main supervisor, so your internal supervisor, and discuss if that can be done. Um, I think so is it's quite strict, but also um, in the case, for example, if you need a visa, obviously the home office requires students to stay in the country uh, for a certain amount of time uh, during the duration of the visa. At least that was my case as, as, as a Mexican student. So yeah, so you, you should, my advice for you is to contact some the, the researcher at SOAS that you would like to have as your supervisor and see if they are happy to still allow for you and, and, and to have a discussion with SOAS and that would be just like a specific type of case, not, not sort of something that could happen, you know, um, broadly for all PhD students. But I, I you know, give it a, give it a try because you, you never know, maybe the, the supervisor would be willing to do it. <clears throat> um, so if you're looking at climate change, I would definitely look, um, it does depend, sort of the media department is, is small. Uh, but you could look at also the development studies department. And at, at the top of my head, I can't, um, you know, maybe Dr. Subir Singha, but I would, I would really advise you to look at, at sort of the staff in the development studies section and see um, researchers that either focus completely on, on, on um, climate change and, and um, environmental activism, things like that, or, or really look at someone that does research on social movements in general. Um, and obviously there's always overlap between social movements and media. So um, they might be able to, to have expertise. And yeah, really like uh, pop them an email, send them an email and say, this is, you know, this is my, my track record. I'm a, I'm a SOA student, I'm interested in this and see, see what happens from there. You, you know, you have nothing to lose. <clears throat> Do we have any other questions? Yeah, no problem. Ah, no worries.
So just so that everyone's aware, we are recording this session. So what we will do is um, in a few weeks time, you will get an email with this session's recording. Um, so you can have a little look back on it if you need to. Um, but yeah, we'll give it a few more moments just if you think of any more questions and then if not, we can uh, wrap up a little bit early. Um, yeah, and I mean, I'm happy to, um, uh, I don't know if I can give my email to Rachel or just pop it on the chat. And I'm happy to, you know, if you don't think of the question right now, you can just send, send me an email with a question and I'm happy to answer after that. It's it's OK. Yeah, feel free to um, pop it in the chat if you want to. And then um, if any students are interested, they can do. Um, and I'm sure there'll be lots of contact details uh, when the recording sent out anyway as well. <laughs> Oh, I'm just going to resend that for you because I think you sent that to oh, okay. <laughs> um, oh, oh, there we go. I've got it. There we go. All right. Well, if no one has any further questions, then you've got the email address there. Um, and if anyone does think of anything, then they can get in contact. Um, but if not, thank you to everyone who joined us today. And thank you for the great session. Um, and we hope to see some of you uh, on our courses very soon. Um, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Right. Thanks, everyone. Take care now. Bye.